Hello everyone and welcome back to Coach Neve. I'm Tom and today we're going to cover keeping the head down. Now who can honestly tell me that they haven't either received or given that tip? It's very very vague and there's so many different ways of doing it. Well today we're going to cover the correct way of keeping your head down within the golf shop. So why has anybody given you the tip of keeping your head down? It's usually because we've just hit a shot which is either struck nothing but air, hit the top of the ball, or hit the ball halfway up. So top or thin shots. The way that people take that tip and implement it in the wrong way is usually by keeping the chin tucked so when they think head down, they literally think, let's get that head down. It looks very much like this throughout the swing. And then lo and behold, in three or four shots, they then topple thin or miss the ball again and think, why the hell did it not work? I mean, I've kept my head down. When you make this movement of tucking the chin, another movement that accompanies it is usually the curvature of the spine. When you watch me do it here, you'll see the chin is very tucked and then the top of the spine makes this sort of C curvature. That now restricts our ability to rotate. If you were to give this a go at home, pop a club over your chest here, and then try and produce that C curvature. You do that generally by pulling the shoulders forwards. And can you see now how the spine has this sort of C shape to it? Do that and then turn your shoulders as much as you possibly can. And what you'll find is you can't really move them very well. Now, go back, pull those shoulders back, get that nice flat, flat chest. See how now my back is now in a nice straight line, doesn't have that C curvature anymore. Now, turn those shoulders, and you'll notice that you'll be able to produce a lot more turns. So basically, we've been told something which is actually debilitating our ability to play. Back to the point, why are we hitting these air shots, top shots and thin shots. It's got nothing to do with the limited range of motion that we have with our neck and head, so why? Well, it's all to do with our posture. When we address the golf ball, our back and hips will create an angle of around 45 degrees, as I'm demonstrating here. When we swing and we approach that contact area, that angle will decrease. Watch in slow motion here. I'll swing back, I'll swing back down and through, and you see how my hips thrust forwards. The angle that was created is now much, much less than what it was before. Now, when we do that, as you've probably noticed in that slow motion demo, the head of the club starts to rise further away from the ground. Hence why the contact point is the up on the ball or over the top of the ball. As you'll see here, when I approach impact, my hips are thrust forwards, therefore losing my angles, and I catch the ball halfway up thin. What does maintaining angles or not standing up away from the ball actually do? Well, we know that it actually allows us to descend the club into the back of the ball and produce a good centered strike which subsequently will allow the ball to get up in the air more, land softer on the ground with a bit more spin. How are we going to measure this? How do we make sure that we stay in our angles? Well, I like to use reference points. And in this drill, we're going to take our golf club, take the butt end of the club, put it against our sternum or the middle of our chest, take our address position to the golf ball, and what you'll see is that we've got this nice straight line pointing at something external. For me, this is gonna be the golf ball bag, or it could be a scuff mark on a mat or on the ground opposite you. Once you've done so, you'll take your address position in its full, and you're going to try and create a full motion, keeping this sternum pointing at that reference point. Watch how in this golf swing, if my chest stays pointing in the same place, I've maintained the angles in my back. If I make a swing and I stand up, or I have this extension, early extension of the hips, you'll notice that that center point starts pointing up and away from that reference point that we've just given ourselves. This is gonna be a really good um, way of telling if you have actually maintained your angles through your golf swing. Another really easy reference point to use is gonna be if you've made contact with the ground. 
if the club has actually created a scuff mark on the mat or a divot in the grass, then you know that you've maintained your angles well enough for the club to reach the ground and give yourself the best chance to make that middle centered strike contact next drill may seem a little bit odd but it's something you can do at home and it's a really good way of indicating that you've stayed in your angles throughout your golf swing so all you have to do is take your address position as you would for any standard golf shot take your hands put them on your shoulders and then walk into the wall until your head makes contact notice how what I'm after here is you to take your general setup and fit it up against the wall rather than taking your setup and then trying to find the wall. It's very important that you make sure you are in your standard position. Once you've done so, you'll turn your shoulders back as though you've completed your backswing. Then you'll turn your shoulders and your hips through to face the target, right heel off the ground, whilst maintaining that connection with your head and wall. So notice how I haven't stood up. If I stand up, what happens, the head comes away from the wall. This is a really good drill, which I encourage you all to do if you struggle to make good contact with the ball. In this swing here, you'll notice that I hold my angles much, much better. My posture at impact is very similar to what it was at address, and therefore I've been able to catch the ball in the middle of the club face. A good game to play um, to, so that we can try and ingrain this new technique into our swing is gonna be through going through your bag from your lowest wedge to your longest iron and trying to make contact with the ball then turf. Hit one ball with each club. Give yourself a point if you've made this correct contact and aim to get about 75% of your clubs making good contact. If you can do that, then keep pushing yourself, see if you can make it to 100% and hopefully that will start to manifest itself out onto the golf course so you hit these good shots every single time. So next time anybody tells you to keep your head down or you're thinking about telling someone to do the same, maybe think twice because more often than not, it's got nothing to do with the head and all to do with the hips. I hope this information really helps you out. I hope it makes you and your golfing partners better golfers for tomorrow. Please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in my future videos. Take care now.